So here we are back in Photoshop looking at the sliced image that we did last time around. And as you can see, Photoshop has created a number of smaller slices to um, accommodate the pieces that we wanted to separate. So as we did last week, we're going to go to Photoshop, Save for Web and Devices. And I've already individually picked different slices and set compression settings. The logo is a ping 8. All of the areas with gradients in them are JPEG at a 51 quality, which is a quality setting that I've found to be pretty good most of the time. And then at the very bottom, this slice looked to me like it would optimize uh, pretty well as a ping. So again, I set that as a ping 8. All right, so that's all done. I've already taken care of that. I'm going to click Save. And in this case, we want to make sure that we're saving HTML and images. I'm going to use custom settings this time. So from the menu, um, you can either go to other or it will go to it'll default to customs. Uh, custom. All right, HTML output XHTML, and let's make sure that the encoding is UTF-8, which is what we've been using all along for our web pages. And then I'm going to click here and go to Slices. And this typically defaults to Generate Table, which is what we did last time around. And I'm going to now switch it to Generate CSS by ID. Okay, save. Since I've done this before, it's already got those and it's going to replace them. You probably won't see this, but um, all right, there we are. So that's what the uh, what the Photoshop document looks like. Um, I've already opened this in Text Wrangler, although let me do it again to make sure I get the proper one. I want to be sure that we're looking at the same thing. Web 1, 14 slicing, and we want to go to Try See Home Page. All right, there it is. And I'm going to take this home page that Photoshop generated. I'm going to drag it to the Firefox browser to look at it. And there it is. And as you can see, it's got several slices. We can actually click them and move them to see where they are. All right, that's Photoshop version. If we do view source, you can see that the CSS is quite long and then when we get down into the body starting here you can see there's a lot of divs um, with images in them here so that's actually somewhat complicated there as well so let's try something different what I did is in um, preparation for the demo is I created a cleaner version of this which is this one called Homepage 3 Complete. And if I put that in the browser, you'll see it looks pretty much identical. I give it a white background rather than the gray. But that's what we had from Photoshop, and this is what we now have. And the other thing that you'll notice is while I can click and move on some of these, there's others that I cannot click and move on because this is a background image in a div. This is a background image in a div. The gradient, the brown, is a background image in a div. And then overlaying that, I've got this and these. So, looks the same other than the background image, uh, other than the background color. But look at the difference in the source. This is my new improved CSS, much simpler. And this is my new improved HTML, much simpler. And yet we get the same results. And actually, this is going to give us a little bit more flexibility than we had before with the Photoshop version. All right, so how are we going to do that? Let me start with home page. And I'm in, going to go to Text Wrangler, home page. All right, so this is what we have to start with. All right, now 
essentially I'm going to get rid of all of this. I don't want anything that Photoshop did because it did it in a really inefficient way. And temporarily I'm going to keep Photoshop's style sheet but I'm going to add my own and then eventually I'm going to delete what Photoshop did because I don't need it anymore. So now this is my new improved style sheet. I'm going to put this in as a comment in the CSS. And oops, let's try that again. Comment in the CSS. And I'm going to set this up as we've done uh, with most of our pages in the second half of the semester, which is I'm going to start with that universal reset to get rid of all the margins and padding that the browser would put in by default. I don't want it to be putting in any margins and padding. I want to do that all myself. So there's my reset. The next thing I'm going to do is notice that Photoshop added an inline style in the body to give it that gray background color. Well, two problems. I don't want to use an inline style, and I don't want it to be gray. I want it to be white. So I'm going to delete all of that from the body, go up here to my new improved style sheet, and just do body, background, color, and the color white is FFF, and let me just save that. And now I have, oh, you know what? Let me save it as a different name. Save as home page demo. So I make sure I'm looking at the right one. Um, all right, so all I've done so far is I've gotten rid of margins and padding, changed the body color to white. If I look at this in the browser, it's probably going to look like that. So really nothing, because if you remember, I deleted everything in the HTML, so that's all gone. All right, no problem. We're going to fix all that. Next, think about how we've done this in the past. We've used a number of divs, wrapper, header, nav, and this is actually going to break down pretty similarly. Let's go back to the original one more time. Um, that original home page that we had from Photoshop. All right. Oh, I know. That's because I saved over it. Okay. All right. Well, we can't go back and look at it right now, but you're going to have to take my word for it. Nav. And um, there's the large image, which I'm going to just call big image. And then I'm going to call the bottom part footer. So we can see this on the Photoshop version of it. So this area up here with the gradient in the background is what I'm calling header. This gold area with the three nav buttons is what I'm calling nav. This big green image, Earth Week, is what I'm calling big image. And then this brown area I'm calling footer. All right, so I've got those four divs that I'm going to define. And we need at least a width and a height for each one. So it's pretty easy to find the width and the height. Well, if we look at the table, so this is the code that Photoshop did. Table is the entire image, and it's 960 by 506. So the wrapper is going to be the equivalent of that. So it's 960 pixels, 506 pixels. All right, wrapper, which is going to close everything. Header. So if I go back here and look at this, the header, the height of the header would be the height of slice number two, because that's the full height here. 
So let me go back here. And this is why I kept the Photoshop code so I can pull the dimensions off of it. Height of that is 160 pixels. So header width same 960 pixels height 160 pixels the nav let's go back to Photoshop so slice 7 8 and 9 are all the nav so if we get the height of one of those slice 7 is 74 74 and 74 so the height of the nav is 74 pixels with 960 as with everything else 74 pixels big image that's slice number 10 here it is so let's see how tall slice number 10 is it's 225 so big image is going to be with 960 pixels height 225 pixels and then we need to do one more which is a footer that will be slice number 11 and with same 960 pixels height and let's see what the height of slice 11 is so let's go down here 7 8 9 10 11 height is 47 pixels so the main reason I kept that code in there is so I could get the dimensions from it since Photoshop thoughtfully provided that for us okay let's get that to be the right kind of bracket um, so we've done body, wrapper, header, nav, we've given each a width and a height. Um, all right, so we've got them in our CSS, but we don't yet have them down here in the HTML. So just so we can see what's going to happen here, I'm going to put in div id equals wrapper and oops let me make sure I get that in there and I'm not going to close that div because inside the wrapper I want to put the other div so div ID equals header and for the time being I'm going to close that one and I'm going to eventually put something inside of it but right now I don't need to worry about that and to make life a little bit simpler, I'm going to copy and paste. This one is going to be nav. So I'm just working my way down the page. Header, nav, paste it in again. Big image. And paste it in one more time. Footer. And now that I've got the four pieces that are inside of the wrapper, now I'm going to close the wrapper like that. Okay, so save it and let's see what we've got. So I'm going to drag it to Firefox again. And it doesn't look like we've got anything, but watch what happens when I go to Outline Block Level Elements. There they are. So header, nav, big image, footer. I'm using Web Developer Toolbar to do that, which I would suggest you always do because it lets you see what you're doing. Um, all right, I think we're going to stop for now. I'm going to take a brief break and then the next tutorial will be where we start to put images into those various divs. And now just in case if you happen to not have web developer toolbar and you want to see where or just want to see where those borders are anyway, we're just going to add it into the style sheet and we're just going to say let's give every div a border that's one pixel red dotted like so and then 
even without the web developer toolbar we can see where everything is just by looking at the borders all right so we're going to take a break and we'll come back with another tutorial